All right, guys, welcome back to the shop. I'm gonna go over this ribbon burner forge that I just finished building last week. And this is gonna be an overview, talking about the design, the components, just some different things like that. So I think it'll be really useful if you're looking at getting one of these or building one of these, I guess. I'm not sure if you're gonna just buy one of these. But uh, just get back to the shop this week. And yesterday was uh, Mother's Day. We had a great time uh, playing up in the mountains. Not, not very near our house, because there's no mountains right around here. But we, we made it up there and had a great time, had a blast. The kids had a blast. Um, Mama had a good time. You know you have, you know you have a catch when, a good catch when, uh, when she wants to go play in the mountains for her Mother's Day outing. So that was, that was pretty fun. So love you, babe. Originally, I wanted to do a full build video on the channel here. And I had mentioned that a while ago. But it kind of just came down to where I needed to get it done. And so I spent a couple, in total, a couple of days last week, I think, getting this put together and finished up. Except for doors, I still have to engineer and, and do that, but it's 90% done. One of my brothers was here and he was able to help me with some of the fabricating here, so that helped speed up the process a little bit. So, originally, the reason I wanted to build a ribbon burner, or specifically a forced air forge, was to have a forge that could easily reach and operate at the temperatures necessary for stainless steel forge welding, specifically stainless steel sand mai, where you've got your high chromium, low carbon steel on the outside, sandwiching a piece of high carbon steel in the center, and you've got a real neat uh, billet that you can forge a blade out of. You've got the qualities of stainless steel over most of the surface of the blade, and that nice high carbon steel in the center. I was not able to get those temperatures in my Venturi style Venturi burner style forge. I've got a uh, two burner majestic uh, forge and I wasn't able to get those temperatures to do the stainless steel sand my forge welding. So I came up with, you know, I did some research, got some ideas and, and collected all the components and all the materials and everything like that to build this. And then it sat for I think several months and I was working on other things. In the meantime, I made some modifications to that Venturi burner forge to where I was actually able to get up to the temperatures necessary to do the stainless steel forge welding. And so I've actually been able to build a couple of stainless steel sand mine knives in the meantime, which has been great, but that forge is not designed to operate at those temperatures. And so the lining's coming apart and it's, you know, so I was like, I just need to get this done. So I spent time to get this built and here it is. Now, um, the temperature, the operating temperature was my biggest motivator for building a forced air ribbon burner forge. But there are some other advantages to this that you might be interested in as well. And one of those is fuel efficiency. So I was able to fire this up and run it for a little bit after completing it, completing it last week. The temperature that I was running this at, even before I had any either of the ends closed in, uh, was comparable to what a Venturi burner forge would require, like 10, minimum 10 PSI, more like 15 PSI or more on your typical Venturi burner forge to get to that temperature or something similar, I was able to do that at like two PSI on this forge. So vast difference, huge savings in, uh, in fuel efficiency for sure. So that's, that's a big advantage too if you're, if you're interested in that. Uh, beyond that, with a ribbon burner style forge, you've got like an eight inch uh, section where you've got the little burner holes so you've got a much uh, greater area of even heat in the forge as opposed to those hot spots that each Venturi burner produces within a Venturi style forge. So that's another advantage as well. The way that I came up with this design specifically was, was heavily influenced by uh, Brian House's design over at housemadeindustrial.us. And he sells an entire kit that you can put together in a sort of a modular form and you don't have to cut out the pieces of steel for the body. It's all nicely, cleanly cut with the machinery and stuff like that. And it goes together pretty, pretty easily. I chose to not spend as much money and to do the forge body build myself. And I bought a couple of components from him that just, I didn't want to mess with, you know, building. But if you're into building everything and it's a hobby for you and that kind of stuff, this, you know, maybe you build all the components. I don't know. But that's the kind of compromise that I ended up going with. But... This design was important to me, or something like this was important to me, 
because I wanted to be able to easily uh, replace the liner as necessary. Doesn't matter what you line your forge with, whether it's fire brick, soft fire brick like this, or the uh, ceramic felt board or whatever that is, or the ceramic wool, and you gotta cover that in that refractory lining to keep those particles from dispersing. Doesn't matter what you use for a liner, it's eventually gonna need to be replaced. And you know, you can do the refractory lining, where you castable refractory, all of that, anything is subject to the expansion and contraction of your forge heating up and cooling down when you turn it off and put it away for the night. So it's eventually gonna crack, it's eventually gonna crumble, it's eventually gonna need to be replaced. So this allows me to remove some bolts and take bricks out, put some bricks back in, and you know, get everything squished back down and the bolts back in the holes, all this kind of stuff. Based on my experience with various different forges, I feel like this is the best of all worlds. The bricks are easily sourced, easy to work with. They do not present the health hazard that the other ceramic uh, products do unless you're careful about rigidizing and covering and ventilating. And so not having to worry about that is, is something that I was also interested in. Now additionally, this does have a ceramic felt in between the brick and the steel. And that's uh, something that Brian House does with his uh, build kits and I use that idea. And it should just kind of keep the steel from getting away from the heat a little more and prevent warpage. And also maybe a little bit, a little bit greater efficiency on the forge as well. This is 3 16 inch plate steel, mild steel. And then this is 3 16 by one inch angle iron. So a pretty sturdy build overall. And I've got bolts holding everything together. And the angle iron is welded, spot welded to the top and the bottom plate. So it's, it's uh, able to be disassembled but pretty sturdy overall. So there was a couple components that I decided to just purchase instead of have to go through the research and development stages to, to build them. It just wasn't worth my time. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not doing this as a hobby, so doing a full build and everything like that, there's, there's limitations to what I want to take the time to do. So I purchased the ribbon burner itself from housemadeindustrial.us. And I also uh, went with uh, Brian's recommendation on the fan and he sells a 3D printed uh, reducer that fits right under the fan and then screws right into a two inch coupler. So it's just real easy to, to connect the fan to the, uh, the feed pipe uh, on, the, on the forge setup, you know, cause I don't care what fan you use, you gotta, you're gonna have to come up with some kind of deal to uh, connect the fan to the pipe cause they're, it's just not a common thing that you can buy to reduce it down like that. So this was a quick and easy solution to that problem and it was worth the money to spend on that. And then additionally on the brass components, the the, the gas um, delivery system, the regulator, the gate valve, I used his uh, Amazon affiliate links on his website because they were all right there and so you know exactly what you need to buy to put this whole, this whole thing together. This is like what, four parts here, three parts here. And so that's just a lot easier than uh, trying to find them all yourself and that kind of thing. Now another feature or advantage to the Forced Air Forge system is the adjustability or the tunability, I should say, of the system because you've got a gate valve here that allows you to adjust exactly how much air is being pushed up this pipe. And then you've got a needle valve here that allows you to adjust exactly how much gas is coming into there. So you can very easily adjust your fuel air mixture that's coming into the forge and set it up just how you want it. You can also adjust just how much gas is coming into the system in the first place based on the pressure coming out of this regulator, but that's uh, probably gonna be similar in most cases in around two to three PSI. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't mention a couple of cons or disadvantages to this system, just since we're talking about it, and of course that is that you have to have a fan which requires some kind of typically electricity, let's be honest here. You don't have a squirrel out there running a, on a wheel to power your fan, but you gotta have a fan with that requires an outside source of energy besides just the fuel. The system does not work without that. And in fact, if the fan ever shuts off when the system is running, that presents a hazard because the gas is going to continue to pump into the pipe here and you know, come out the back end or the front end or whatever, and that's a problem, that's a hazard. Definitely don't want that. 
And I'll just mention, by the way, that you can also get a solenoid system, which frankly, I might do that here at some point, that connects to the fan that only allows gas to flow into the system or at the, at the, at the uh, output here, as long as there's power to the fan. So that eliminates or reduces, greatly reduces the risk of gas getting pumped into this without the fan blowing. But you have to have a fan to run this system as opposed to a Venturi style forge, which runs on its own based off of atmospheric pressure as the, as the, as the forge is burning. So I just want to share this as well too, because there is a specific sequence in which you have to follow to safely and properly light this forge as opposed to simply turning the gas on on your Venturi burner forge and you know lighting it from the inside of the forge. That's not how this works. Um, to avoid <laughs> a safety hazard, there's a right way to do this and I had to learn this so I'm gonna share it. First thing is you gotta turn on your fan so that you've got air coming into the system. I'm just going to turn the fan all the way down to the lowest setting, which is still fairly, still plenty adequate. So the fan's running, the gas on the tank is off at this point. I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. I've got my, but I've got my uh, on-off valve here at the uh, delivery spot. That's still off. Okay, so the gas on the, on the tank is on, it's still off over here, so I still have no gas coming into the system, just air. And then I'm gonna take my torch and get that right up in there by the burner. And then I'm gonna turn on my gas. All right, so we've got the forge lit. Now, I should point out that I've already tuned this, so it would be, at the very least, it would be very close to where it needs to be. If I was starting from scratch, I would have the needle valve completely off, and I guess I should have shown it to you this way. Let me start over. Okay, we're starting over. This is, this is not how you... I'm gonna turn the needle valve completely off, all right? My on-off valve is off, the needle valve is completely screwed in, it's off, okay? So, the air's still running. I'm gonna turn on the on-off valve to on, and then I'm gonna slowly open the needle valve. This is how I would do it from scratch before I had anything adjusted. Okay. The result is basically the same because I already had it adjusted initially. There you go. The heat coming, the heat coming off of that is pretty intense. You see we've got a nice little uh, vortex going there, which distributes that heat nice and evenly in the forge box. So I'm gonna make, the, make it rich. That's too rich, look at that. But you can see Dragon's Breath coming out of the forge. Adjust that down a little bit. That's hot. too lean right there. See how the blue flames are coming off of the burner too far and they're not healthy. And that's pretty good right there. You can kind of play with the air and the fuel back and forth to kind of get them dialed in with each other. I should point out that uh, I learned all that from Brian at housemadeindustrial.us and he has a whole video on how to tune it and everything like that so you can he explains it a little more in depth I just wanted to show the basic um, idea because I don't want anybody out there to put something together and then just you know not understand how it's how you light it safely so there's that but there's just a little bit of tuning that's involved and that thing heats up so the next thing I got to do is engineer some doors and uh, 
The back end's fine for now. This is gonna be primarily, I'm thinking for billets, um, forge welding and stuff. And I, I'm, uh, cross my heart and hope to die, not using any flux in this ever. <laughs> so anyway, there's that guys. I've got some plans for how to make this door because that heat is uh, pretty intense, but it needs to stay in the forge. So anyway, I hope this was helpful for you. I'm excited to be able to get this thing into use and start forge welding some stuff in it. But anyways, appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you on the next video.